Nice. <clears throat> uh, hello and welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Uh, back today with Grimmite Black Maverick, uh, the sort of pet tech that I've had for now um, within the Maverick archetypes. Uh, I think Black is, is pretty good right now. Um, the splash is, in my opinion, definitely worth it, um, giving you access to extra removal. That's pretty good right now in a pretty creature dominated format. Uh, Plagueton is really nice, Abrupt Decay in the main deck. Uh, Vraska has been around for a little while, uh, but Kai is the big one that I really like. Kai has been really nice at attacking uh, any sort of early mana accelerants in either um, fixing or actual accelerants, so hitting things like opposing Noble Hierarchs or Birds of Paradise, Astrolabes, Mox Diamonds, Chalice for One, Aether Vial, Mother of Runes, Giver of Runes, Delver. Um, there's a huge amount of targets for Kai right now. Um, so right now we have one in the main, one on the board, which I really like. Uh, I think Kai has been phenomenal so far. It's also really good at just exiling food, um, kind of keeping Oko down on the, on the down low as much as you can, uh, and also at exiling Uro, which is kind of cool. Um, so it does have sort of a few uh, things that are going for it. Uh, exiles Loam as well, which is really nice. Uh, we do have Scavenging Ooze uh, to do that within Maverick, but it's nice to kind of have two ways to do that. Um, especially on a, on a Planeswalker. Um, the one reason I really like Kaya and Vraska is they're both removal uh, forms of removal that stick around. Uh, so you're not just one for one in your opponent, you're actually keeping around some value in a Planeswalker uh, and then hopefully getting uh, additional value off that over further turns, which is really nice. Uh, and I think it's really what Maverick needs right now to keep up with the format. There's a lot of Strixes, Ice Fang Quartals, Okos, cards that you're playing and you're getting straight advantage from destroying a card off or, um, you know, things like Plague Engineer. You know, if, if someone plays Plague Engineer against me and deals with two creatures and then I have to remove it as well, it's usually a three for one at least, uh, which is just insane. So to keep up with that sort of value, uh, we have to have some of those kind of cards ourselves. Things like Kaya, things like Frasca. Um, Mum's kind of there, you know, they have to deal with Mum before they deal with the actual creature they want to deal with. Um, but yeah, I think that right now there's a lot of creature decks around, so black seems pretty good. Um, we're not running Thoughtseize, which uh, I haven't been that big on since the printing of Veil. Um, it's also just, I guess I realize that we're spending a mana and we're down a card and our opponent's down a card, but they haven't spent any anything for it. We do, of course, get the choice of what we take, which is great, especially against combo decks where you might be able to take one piece uh, and then land some threats and disruption to keep them off them finding both pieces again. Um, but I think, yeah, Thoughtseize, I just haven't been the biggest fan of recently. Um, there could be a meta where we go back to it, but um, I think right now I'm ha pretty happy with Veil. Vale. Um, although Veil vale is a little bit awkward. I do like playing it to sometimes get in the awkward position of just not having the mana open or wanting to build out our board. Um... You know, it's not always that we get to go turn one noble into turn two knight, or you know, turn three knight holding up a green source for Vale. I think it's kind of awkward. Um, so I'm not sure if Vale is. It might just be a card that because it's green doesn't mean we have to play it because it's a powerful green card. Um, there could be a better card to play a bit more of disruption, maybe something like Choke, um, which is still pretty relevant even though Astrolabe has made it a little bit worse. I think it's it's okay. Uh, but I think the best way we're going to analyze this deck is just by playing it. Um, so let's go straight into a league. A huge thank you to you guys for coming in and watching. Uh, this should be pretty fun. So we're playing a Legacy League with Grimma Black Maverick. We're using play points. Kaya, get off the screen. Let's get in. I hope you're all well. Um, hope all your families are well. Obviously, a pretty trying time. So, um, yeah. Getting, getting through it, which is nice. Getting through it together. Got a few new um, soundboards to use tonight as well, which is kind of cool. You might have seen the Seinfeld one last time, which was pretty cool. Playing against Zoomkun1985204. <laughs> um, I'm not going to keep this. Uh, we could draw into a, a land drop. You know, we could draw into a green source that could then cast the Noble Hierarchs, but uh, pretty happy to mulligan this. I really want to have a hand where I can just cast what I have in hand. Uh, and this is a lot better. I'll keep this. Uh, and because we have two fetches, I'm pretty happy just to bottom the Scrubland. It could also be the Quisali Prime Mage that I put back, and I think it might be. Um, because we can find it with Green Suns, I'd rather just have three lands um, that we can play around with. So I'm going to put the Quisali back.
depending on what we're playing against. I could just go for basics here, but we'll see if this Delver deck is actually on Wastelands or not. Noble Hierarch. So this is an interesting one. Um, we can fetch up a basic, play Noble, uh, and then next turn play Thalia and Mum. We could also go Mum this turn, Thalia next turn. Against Delver, I do like getting Mum online quite quickly. Um, the advantage of Noble Hierarch is that if they don't have days this turn, Noble kind of allows us to play around days uh, over the following turns. So I think yeah, I'd rather lose the Noble to a uh, days than I would uh, the Mum. And at least once the Noble's down, and if it comes down, then we kind of get to play around days anyway, which is nice. Yeah, I think it's really hard to keep up with snow piles. Um, I don't think we do at all. I mean, there's little things like Kyra and Vraska, which is nice to move into. But um, I think when you look at, you know, card for card, they're obviously gaining a lot uh, from just playing their, their cards. So, yeah, I would never say that we keep up with the snow piles. Um, I think that if we can keep up, uh, it's usually... Yeah, usually them doing... Uh, usually them not finding the cards, then us finding the cards. Pretty happy just to go for mum here. No flip. Interesting. Pretty happy not to block here. I think protecting this Thali is going to be quite nice. Arcanist is fine. And another Delver. Okay. Hmm. Two cards left. I do want to sword the Arcanist. But then the Thalia does open its ourselves up to days, which I don't think is the worst. I can't play Thalia and then protect the swords from Force of Will, but I think that's okay. We do have green suns for Scrib Ranger, which is nice, but we have to draw a, a land off the top for that to happen. And Thali here doing a lot of work on the ground as well because First Strike's going to keep these Delvers at bay. Sprite Dragon. Alright. Just going to 6 here. Cradle would be pretty sweet. Catacombs. Uh, gonna go for a Bayou. And then just go for Birds of Paradise here. It allows us to make sure we can get Scrib Ranger on next next time, or next next turn. And it's also something we can protect with Mum to actually keep something like a Delver off, so. Pretty happy for that. Um, I'm not gonna attack here. I could attack for two, but I think if these Delvers don't flip, then I definitely want to have the Thalia back. Force, okay. So Force and a card. Pretty happy to try to block here. I'm just gonna give Pro Blue. Hey, Dead Abbey Donut, welcome. Yeah, very cool to see some of the decks playing Sprite Dragon. Uh, it can get out of hand pretty quickly as well, which is pretty nuts. Another Green Sun Zenith, all right. Let's see if their last card is Force and Blue card. Force 
we'll see. All right. Currently taking, <clears throat> currently taking eight in the air, which is pretty rough. Definitely puts us in bolt range. Can't do anything here. Another Delva. Oh. Uh, so I believe what is dead. We can get Screw Ranger. Can't get anything else. Screw Ranger gives us two blockers, and then we're just dead to the others. So rough. Delva being Delva though. Uh, Delva's gonna be interesting. I don't mind Kaya. She's great against Delva and also against uh, Dreadhold Arcanist. I don't mind Plague Engineer. Um, Plague's nice because it does turn off uh, Dreadhold Arcanist. And we could also preemptively name something like Sprite Dragon or Delva of Secrets as a creature just, just can't come down. I do like Shifting Ceratops. Um, I think Oof is a little bit too late. Pride Mage doesn't do a whole lot, unfortunately. I like dropping down on one library. We can't be too aggressive with it anyway. Um, I think Vraska is probably a little bit too slow as well. Yeah, I'm just a big fan of killing uh, Dreadhold Iconist on site. Especially because it just can um yeah pretty easily run away with the game i'm not gonna put mum and thali in front of it so they're gonna get value off it either way which is pretty rough yeah i wanted to play the fourth deafening silence but i do like having one extra slot in the deck just to play around with stuff um i don't mind dropping green suns because they're not really looking for something in particular Questing Beast is interesting. I do like it because of the Vigilance. It's great against Arcanist. Um, it also is pretty bad against Bolt, which is nice. Yeah, because you can uh, get protection after ordering blockers. Hmm. Three more. Interesting. I don't mind the plagues. And I might just go with one veil. Would be good to actually put together some sort of like soft sideboard guide to see how this goes. Interesting. It's a very reactive hand. Which I'm not the biggest fan of. Ramanap's nice, but it doesn't do a whole lot. So what's our plan? Savannah go, hold up swords, untap. Swords the turn one threat if there is one. If not, play a fetch to hold up a decay, or just hold up swords and veil and then untap. Hmm. Does mean that things like uh, Noble Hierarchs off the top aren't the greatest. I think I'm okay with this hand. We're definitely, I feel, the control deck. If the game goes too long, then we're most likely going to overtake it, so. Don't really just want to get wastelanded either, so I'm pretty happy just to go windswept teeth pass. Tarn's fine. 
stove is fine. Swords, all right. I kind of want to keep this veil so I can cast Ramen up a little bit later than everything else. This is fine. Hmm. Hey, Graham, welcome. Hey, Adrian, welcome. Green Suns. Gonna swords first. Play Savannah. Green Suns for Dried Arbor. This means the next turn we can cast the Ramen up and have Veil up, which is nice. It's going to be fine. Mum's pretty nice. Uh, a braid is okay. I think here I'm pretty happy just to cycle this Veil end of turn to make sure I can untap and draw a land. Hiya! Yeah, mum would be sweet, but the uh, the blazing volley was a great, great answer. Yikes! I feel like they're digging for a wasteland more than a threat, just to try to lock us out. Delve is a good one. I don't mind keeping the abra the abrupt decay for now, seeing if we can untap into a land here for Kaya. Yeah, I think X-Vader I don't want to lose today's, and because we have the Decay, I'm not too unhappy with losing the, uh, the Kaya. We 
wasteland. Hmm. Here I'm pretty happy to play knight. Probably pretty happy to go after a manor as well. Knight is a pretty big boy, which is nice. I don't think they'd have something narrow like Submerge. They might have Brazen Borrower, which can bounce it, which would be a little bit rough. Pond is okay. They are playing a braid, yeah. I will have to deal with this Delver at some point, but... Down to nine. Ugh. Hopefully it's not just like two bolts left, that'd be pretty rough. Rough. I guess we could have played it safe, perhaps, with the Abrupt Decay, but I did like the Ramanap line. But that is Delver sometimes, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, Blue Red Delver up a, up a lot since the, uh, the Arena Surgeons of Rug. I know James Hugh has been doing really well with his uh, Blue Red Shell, which is cool to see online. Yeah, I guess a braid's pretty good in the sideboard, especially if you want something to answer Chalice as well. Bok Menace. Uh, this is a little bit sketchy. I'm not a big fan of the mana base, so I'm going to mulligan this. Uh, this is okay. I'm going to keep this and bottom the... Probably the second mum. Could just be the land as well. Sylvan Library's really nice, so... Planes. Not even a snow planes. Maybe this is like a death and taxes deck. No swords. Temple. Okay, this is a uh, at least green white Eldrazi. Displacer. Uh, I'm pretty sure they actually, uh, banned the card that's bugged they removed it from mtgo until i could uh could do anything else until they could uh finish it hmm 
I don't mind paying here. It all comes in tapped, but at least we just get to put everything in tapped. Savannah Noble Mum. And then hopefully find some removal off the top. Thalia Heretic Kath Kathar really cool right now. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Thalia. Especially it's just a three power first strike, really good against a lot of the format. And also coming in uh, tapped is really nice. This looks like Smasher, okay. It's gonna be taking at least eight here. Do we have to block? I think this is fine. Pretty rough though, because now we need to find an answer for the displacer, or they can just displace it pretty much everything. And I think we're literally just dead. Because we get to untap, they most likely have another mana, which is two Eldrazi displacer activations. Yeah. Can't even put enough in front of the uh, Reality Smasher with the Thali Heretic Cathar out, so. Very nice. Um, this matchup, I definitely like taking Thalia out. Uh, I don't mind leaving Oof in, especially some of their mana, it can hit it, which is nice. I like the Engineers. Uh, and there's probably one more card that I like here. Deed's interesting. It might be the Savine's Reclamation. Eldrazi. I don't believe they play Aether Vial. Um, green, white, Eldrazi. Ceratops is interesting. It's a it's a pretty good body. This is modern. It does make it 60. Pretty good against most of their, their creatures, um, at least in the in the three CMC slot. Uh, not sure, but I don't think that really changes anything. Uh, this end I'm fine with, I'll keep this. I know there's been a few green-white decks going around with Once Upon a Time um, and also just some sideboard cards for green. Gonna go for Savannah here and then play Library. Which is is okay. We can't be too aggressive with Library, but um, it is pretty nice as, as a turn to play on the draw, on the play, sorry. Especially like where Eldrazi is, I wanna find probably removal off the top. Place is okay. Kind of want to find like a noble hierarchy here. That'd be kind of good to use my one mana on. Uh, so this is pretty nice. I'm going to put the engineer on top. And I'm going to pay for this. So now we can go noble. 
swords. Wasteland. Wasteland. Probably like don't really need to swords there. The swords is probably better in like a competitive tournament to keep for something like Thornotsia or Reality Smasher. But I'd rather use it just to clear the board. Double planes isn't too bad. Ballist is fine. Uh, put on top. Put on top. Yeah, they didn't shoot Noble, which is interesting. I wonder if they have like a Soul Land and they were wanting us to play another X1 so they could play Soul Land, tick it up and just trade it for two creatures. But yeah, interesting they didn't take out the Noble because if we miss a, a land drop there, we don't have too much to do. Pretty much nothing other than cast Kusali Prime Mage. Now the hand is a little bit awkward if they play something like a Thought Nuts here because we could have had that Swords to Plowshares. Wasteland looking pretty good for us because of the night. <laughs> I take that back. Interesting. Pay for this and put this on top. Play Kusali. Don't really care about this mum right now. Or at least don't care about the two other creatures. So pretty happy just to attack with mum here for three. I think our main thread of night is gone, so trying to keep the mum around for Swords to Plush isn't, isn't the, the biggest thing anymore. Why don't we have a companion? Yurion's probably the companion that I like the most. Um, but in Maverick, we did play a Gigantha League, which did really well. We went 4-1 in like a Punishing Brew. Uh, that was pretty sweet. But um, yeah, Gigantha just didn't do a whole lot outside of just being a 5-5 for us. Not being able to use the mana for generic is, is pretty rough. Nine. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, put on top. And I'm going to pay for this. Am I? Yeah, I can go to seven. Not too greedy. Ah, 
Harbit is fine. I wonder if they play Ghost Quarter as well. Uh, put on top, put on top. Hmm. The Knight's not really doing anything else, especially with the Leonard Arbiter in play, so might as well just attack here for four and suck any our clock going. Yeah, companions are in a weird spot. I think there's a lot of creativity with what they could do with companions. More than just like, you know, ban or restrict. top put on top I probably don't need there are 14 I probably want to just abrupt decay the Arbiter now. And then the Plague Engineer answers the Mum, which is nice. So to be fair, I could have actually attacked with both Knights. There's no real reason to keep the other one back other than just for holding up Wasteland or making these Knights bigger. I do want to get a Shuffle as well because we know about two lands on top, so... I guess that was what I was thinking about. But yeah, uh, Nick Chimmy. Uh, Blue-green Omnitel is pretty nice right now. I wouldn't mind playing that. Pretty straightforward as well, which is nice. Has a few different lines of winning. Plays Drawn from Dreams, which is a really cool card. A fixed dig through time, if you will. Um, I can find you a list for sure. Hmm. That's a that's a very old list there, but you kind of get the general consensus. I believe it usually plays Ice Fang Quadle, which is pretty nice. Interesting.
I'm going to assume that they use the walking blisters here. But then if they use the walking blisters, we get to just name human. I was thinking of revoke for a second, I apologize. Construct, of course. <laughs> is it construct? I think it is, because it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be two turns anyway. And then questing beast off the top can just finish everything off, which is nice. Actually, maybe it's human. Because if we take care of mum here, they kind of have to block a knight, and then take six. I'm gonna keep a knight back. Uh, I could attack with mum, but I think just keeping it back is fine. Going after us, interesting. No guts, no glory. Uh, boarding, I don't think changes. Yeah, I think we just send this back. The um, Sylvan Library was really nice. Just making sure I wasn't drawing into anything dead. And then also knowing when I really needed to shuffle on the top with Knight was good. Uh, this hand is pretty good. It's a little bit high with Questing Beast and Shifting Ceratops. But I do like this part. So I'm going to keep this. Another Noble. I'm gonna go for Bayou so we can cast this Decay. Swords is fine. Green Suns. I think you're artist like Wasteland on Temple and Plain Noble. I really don't want them casting Thought Not Seer. And taking off two mana is, is pretty nice. Another Temple, okay. What if they try to like upkeep just no hit the noble? Looks like they are. Uh, then I will go swords. I guess we could have gone con. We probably should have gone decay there, because then if we draw into a land, we can hold up swords for a thought knot here. Decay here does nothing. But another noble isn't the worst. I guess now it's like blister that I'm kind of scared of. Rip is fine. We currently have a hand that deals with it quite nicely anyway. Another green suns. Maybe Scrib Ranger's the go here. Scrib Ranger allows us to hold up Bayou. It also allows us to go and get another Matadork with Green Suns, which is kind of nice. 
So we can get Scrib Ranger. We can untap Noble, return Bayou, and then play Bayou for turn. I don't mind just holding up Abrupt Decay. It means the next turn we can still cast Questing Beast or Shifting Ceratops. Most likely Questing, Questing Beast, but we'll see. Smash is okay. Could have kept the Bayou in hand and just played the second Bayou for turn, which is probably correct. And this all comes back to using that uh, that sword splashes as well, because we could have just discarded maybe the shifting ceratops instead. Ooh, Krakus is pretty nice. Yikes. Krakus is a big reason to play shifting ceratops over the questing beast. No blocks. Savannah. Doesn't really change anything. We're most likely just going with Shifty here. Um, attack for three in the air. Now I want to untap Noble Return of Bayou so I can hold up Abrupt Decay. I guess Displacer on their side just does it. There's a few cards that just do it, unfortunately. And yeah, kind of cool to come down to it. I mean, it does come down to the part to exile. Sorry, the using the Swords of Plowshares over Abrupt Decay, where Abrupt Decay is obviously better. So hopefully we can we can get away with it. Tomb. I guess the Sheratops get, get to untap with the Scrib Ranger, so that's not the worst. Just passing back. Interesting. So what do I want to do here? I probably want to hit... Hmm. Can you give this vigilance? Oh, I can't give it vigilance. I guess we can because of shift because of Scrib Ranger. Hmm. <laughs> So really there's no reason. Read your cards before you t before you do anything. Read your cards. I guess we give a trample. This does also show off a two-turn clock, which is kind of nice. Untap, return this. Just gonna go for a knight because then we can go and get Wasteland the following turn, which is nice. For Caracas and then cast uh, Questing Beast. I 
Thought Not's okay. Pretty timely. One card left for opponent. Hmm. Hmm. Does that change anything? I kind of get a free draw off the knight as well, so maybe I'll do that. still swing for six this turn which the smasher kind of has to block Yeah, that's fine. Play mum. Play engineer. Is there a reason to name Eldrazi? Maybe the better reason is just to go for Mother of Runes. So human. Thought not off the top is pretty rough, but doesn't really change things. I think yeah, Smasher might be lethal if we don't name Eldrazi. I do like just going Eldrazi just to make sure. Hmm. Uh, it is interesting. Smash it off the top, swing with both. We're at six. Plague Nia can go in front of the th reality smasher. Yeah, I don't mind going for human. Uh, untap Knight here, return the Savannah. to land okay no attacks nice not gonna use the knight wasteland's interesting but not the greatest as of yet huh. I wonder if the play is actually just to go for Cradle and then Blast Zone. <laughs> and try to get up to four. But we are getting pretty close anyway. So just going wide here, which is kind of nice. Another Thought Knot's fine. This is... So I believe we can... Ah, uh, we're one land off. 
So I was going to say sack for Cradle, sack untap, sack for uh, Blast Zone, but we need three, including one for Scrib Ranger. I guess I could do it for two, which turns off Rest in Peace, but then hits a Scrib. So I think we might just sack this. Uh, I'll float a mana. Two, four. Yeah, I think Cradle's better. Yeah, definitely pretty close to it, especially because the uh, attack with Scrib does turn off the Ancient Tombs. Good pickup. So we know they still have one card in hand. If it's like Soul Land Smasher, that is rough. Oh, uh, that wouldn't be the worst because we can still beat that, especially with the Hierarchs up. Even... Yeah, I don't think even Walking Blister does it, which is nice, because they can't kill the blockers that they need. They could uh, maybe destroy the Scrib Ranger with something like Walking Blister for one, or Sword Splash. Uh, not Sword Splash, it's because of the Mum. I think it's Walking Blister or Bust here. Yeah. Thankfully. Tight games, which is cool. Yeah, I think we um we definitely could have set up a, an attack there where we just let things through, but would have had to have known that they didn't have a walking blister. Like, I'd hate to get hit by a walking blister for two after we let through a, um, a Thought Nuts here. That'd be pretty tough. Spaghetti monsters are pretty scary. Uh, I'm going to keep this. This is fine. Burden Catacombs for Scrublands. We have all our colors. Turn one high rock. Oh, Garuda. Interesting. Well, that changes things. That means I want to go turn one Verdant Catacombs. Hold up swords to plowshares. Lucky. Sometimes I miss the companion. But in this case, it definitely changes the way we want to navigate the first couple of turns because at least the swords to plowshares is interaction. I don't think it was a mistake. I think Eldrazi is fine. I think it's a very interesting aggressive deck that also has some really good disruption. It's definitely turned it into a, an actual format defining um, archetype, which is which is nice, both in modern and legacy. Soul and Smash was lethal. I don't think it was because we were on six. We could let the Smasher through and then just put two Hierarchs in front of the Nobles, in front of the Thought Nazis, which is nice. Unless I'm missing something. Opponent kept seven as well, so perhaps they have six mana turn one. Chrome Monks? Okay. Ancient Tomb. LED, there we go. There's three mana. 
<laughs> 13 trample. That's pretty good. Oh, is this chalice for zero? Okay, that's fine. Interesting. This resolves, and then with the trigger on the stack, we can fetch for a scrubland and swords. Garuda. This means anything coming off its uh, triggered ability doesn't see anything to copy, which is nice. They do get a resto, which, you know, is a clock. We do have a few good turns. Um, so Noble into Mum is pretty good here. It also, it also just turns on Questing Beasts as a really good attacker the following turn. Because now we have the clock, even though they're up five. Collector is pretty nice. Can they win the race? I don't think they can. They have to draw into something really good. Maybe like another Thought Knot. I think I'm more scared of what's in play in the uh, the resto uh, than just this. Huh. So we can definitely attack first. Fun fact, Scrib Ranger does kill Phantasmal Image, which is kind of cool. Hmm. I'm going to go with Scoos. Go after the tomb. Hold up a mana, so we take six, we gain one, we take five. Yeah, thankfully for us, this is looking to work out pretty well. Uh, eat that Garuda. Cradle would be sweet. Thalia, interesting. Eat Resto. Um. We can take six, eight, nine. Yeah. I like oof. Turn off the chrome mox. Swing with everything. I don't believe they have removal, so pro white. Attack for five with exalted. Nice. Um, this is always an interesting one. I do like deafening silence. Abrupt decay is okay. Um, I think Ramanap's a little bit too slow. Dahlia could be a little bit too slow. Blast Zone is interesting. Blast Zone can probably come out. Rask is probably a little bit too slow as well and isn't really doing enough. So I don't mind just these three. Hmm. I think this is okay. I do sometimes bring in surgical just to see if if they go off quickly and we have surgical we can at least see how they board which is kind of nice yeah sadly surgical does nothing against Gyruda and they don't usually have any 
sort of reanimation effects in the deck so it's not like we can snag something in response to an animate dead or a uh entomb uh sorry reanimate i don't think teague does anything as well i think this is fine i think the deafening silences are probably the best card that we have unfortunately and we just hope that they have a turn two and we have a, a turn one deafening silence Caracas is also a great card to have in the opening. So this hand is sweet, like it's a it's a great hand, but it's just pretty awful against a fast combo deck. So I'm not gonna keep it. I really want to mulligan to probably deafening silence. Caracas is probably going to keep me from mulliging again, and then also Source to Plashes is pretty good, so. There we go. Well, that's pretty perfect. I'm going to keep this. I do have to make sure that it's don't go off turn one, like literally go off. I have kept that seven, so I think that's going to happen. So I'm going to keep this. Hmm. It's probably the mum for now. I do want to have Dried Arbor as a green source, just in case I don't draw into one. Decay is an interesting one to drop. Yeah, I don't mind dropping Decay. The one thing I don't like about dropping a non-green card is that we can't find it later on with something like Green Sun Zenith, but I think this hand is pretty fine as a six, even on the draw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ruda, what do they hit? Frexian, Frexian. All right, so they get one more go. Hit again. Sai is pretty good as well. Yeah, Sai is going to make me concede. I don't think I can win through a Sai, especially with Krakus already gone. I have to draw, like, white source into sword supply shares. I'd rather just try to play on the play. Uh, and this is fine. Yeah. But yeah, there's the deck. <laughs> uh, we would love to play first. Yeah, sadly, if the deck doesn't go off, then the games are pretty nice. They do have a good mid-range game of like Thought Not Seers and Re Resto Angels, so it's not over over. But yeah, sometimes for some of the Fedex like Maverick, there just isn't too much we can do if they just go off turn one. But yeah, definitely not the the Maverick, not definitely not the magic that I enjoy. But yeah, pretty, um, pretty, oh, this is sweet. Heavily relies on the deafening silence, but I think this is okay. Yeah, I think just because the deafening silence and we also have a threat in screws, I'm going to keep it. Mox is fine. Also put them down a card, which is nice. Creature? Metamorph. Okay. Interesting. It's pretty good. 
But it, okay, it still taps for something. Okay. Huh. Well, I guess I don't mind the wasteland here because we drew into the noble. And just keep the decay back for Chromox. It also means if we draw into Green Sun Zenith, we can then go after for Collector Oof, which is really nice. So I do like Waste because it deals a two Crete, two mana, and then we have a Noble Harak to follow up. Scary start, but from our opponent. I mean, if they just have like land as well. Uh, <laughs> rough. Okay, we're definitely not dead dead, which is nice. I kind of want to get this mum online, so I think we might just go scavenging ooze and mum. <laughs> Nick, that was a, a pre-planned pre sound, but uh, thank you. Powder keg? Okay, a little bit like a... Interesting, okay. Like a ratchet bomb. Uh, I'm pretty happy just to take this. And then hopefully draw into Caracas. Sally Pride Mage. Play a land. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a fuse counter on Powder Keg. Sack it, destroy each artifact and creature with Gavada Mana Class equal to the number of fuse counters on Powder Keg. Okay, so I have to deal with this now. So let's go for Decay on Powder Keg. Ah, it'll cost three because of the Thalia. Rough. Well, I have to fetch. I want to make the screws a 3-3, which I can do with the Hierarch, so the Thalia can't attack. But then it's a case of trying to get it big enough to actually deal with the Gyruda. We can survive this. It's gonna be tough. See if they attack with the Thalia. They shouldn't. Interesting, okay. Um, so let's go to blocks. Block, block, block. Okay. Before damage, eat spark double. And then mum gives herself protection from blue. Now the screws is pretty much a 6-6, six, six, which is nice. Collector Oof. Well, I kind of have to untap here. I can't do anything. I have to keep the mum up for the 7-7 seven, seven and then make the screws a 6-6 six, six to deal with the other Garuda. Then we can untap and play a threat. So hopefully a whiff here from our opponent. Let's go to blocks. 
block here, block here. Add a green, add a green, add a green. Eat guy rooter. All right. Uh, eat noble. Last one, eat Thalia. Mum, give herself pro blue. All right. Dryad, not the worst. Turn off their chrome mocks. Okay. Bomb's pretty good, doesn't do anything though. Yeah, maybe we could have gone to one. This might be a, um, a matchup where life total doesn't really matter. Could have also saved screws, yeah, that's very correct. And probably the right choice, to be fair. That was just, um, yeah, that's just tunnel vision, really. I think keeping the screws was definitely correct. Oh, is there a point? Hmm. Yeah, the screws was definitely the right line because then we could also actually attack them. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe screws there is just better. I think it definitely is, seeing how that game turned out. You can prop crock the gray guy rooter from Resto. Do you mean you can protect it with the uh, like trigger on the stack? Because yeah, that is pretty cool. Rough. Yeah, so there are at least two more creatures in the bin and two knights. Oh, hey, Julian. Proc is in trigger. Yeah, you can trigger it from Restore as well, which is really nice. They usually play the uh, Dragon Lord something that does that gives haste to all creatures. So you can obviously flip into a bunch of copies and then give them all haste, which is cool. Uh, on the play, which is nice. Uh, this is fine. Turn one bird, turn two library. Maybe even turn one bird, turn two library, and then mum. Not sure what I'm up against, but this hand is, is pretty nice. It really relies on the library a lot, but you can also play around days with it, which is nice if they don't bolt the bird. Dragon Lord. Colgan. Thank you, Nag. Thank you, Jack. Oh, they switched that to Sire? Okay. Interesting. I guess maybe they feel if they go wide with a bunch of copied guy rooters, they don't really care about the lost time or the lost turn. It's not like one Caracas or one Swords is going to change anything. Hey Julian, how'd you find uh, Eldrazi the other night? I saw you were streaming uh, Legacy Eldrazi. With a white splash, I believe. Oh, 
Oh, if this is a Pondo, I would be very happy. Red. Bolt. Okay. That's fine. Hmm. Interesting. Pretty happy to wasteland here. And then green suns for dried upper. Keeps my mana flowing. Which is really nice. And then also gives us the ability to next turn play Sylvan Library again. Just one of those turns where I'm sure you could write like an article on it and all the different lines you could take. Alright. Really going after my mana. I think Noble Hierarchy is like the best draw. <laughs> oh, classic. Yes, that's what I want to see. Oh, perfect. No force, wow, okay. <sighs> yeah, the sounds are cool. I do like keeping them two, four, five. They have Hooting Mantles online if they want to cast it. They don't. Two cards on the bottom. Okay. Looks like they're digging. So finding something like a Wasteland here would be really nice. Another Knight. Can we find Cradle? No. Uh, I'm going to go for Hmm I probably want to keep this knight around So I'm pretty happy to pay 4 And I'm going to pay for the windswept teeth Because that allows me to play around days So I'm going to pay 4 And put this on top That means we can go Windswept and tonight. Six six already, which is nice. Pretty keen just to keep this fetch up for Sylvan Library, because we know we definitely want to draw into that um into that other night. I guess we could also find Thalia, which would allow us to cast Thalia and then play Swords around Force. Green Suns. Green Suns for Scoos is also another option, because then it allows us to just kind of negate this Dreadhorde Icarnas for now. Which I don't actually mind. I'm going to put that on the top. And I don't think I want to pay another 4 and go to 11. Maybe I'll take that back. How aggressive are we getting here? Yeah, I think we're, if we're paying four, we're definitely dealing with the Dreadhold Icarnas, either by Swords to Plashes or uh, Scavenging Ooze to target what they target with Dreadhorde. But maybe I'm actually just trying to get super aggressive here. Swords the Arcanist attack for seven. They go down to 13 and then play the other knight. Doesn't play around days, but we can keep it open. Put on top. I think this is fine. I'd usually keep the swords for Delva, but I don't think we're really that scared of Delva right now, especially with Second Knight. So I'm going to put this on top.
Yeah, maybe maybe taking them off red as well is pretty good. Maybe I want to float the mana first. This means they can't daze it back to their hand. And if they daze the trop, I'm not too unhappy. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Hmm. So I assume it's just a four wasteland, three trop, three Volk. Uh, I do like Kaya. Uh, I don't like Collector Oof. I don't like Quasali Pride Mage. I think Vrask is a little bit too slow. I don't mind shifting Ceratops. Vogue's interesting. But if they're playing Mandrills, there's no real way to play Bog. Unless they, like, you know, fetch to play the Hooting Mandrills when you have a, a second. I like switching Vraska for the Shifting Ceratops. I don't mind Engineers, but they're a little bit slow. But. Uh, Should have dropped one more. Should have dropped one more. I probably don't need second Kaya, but we'll play with 61. It's fine. Uh, and this hand is okay. Uh, no straight up removal, but it is pretty nice with our, our curve. Planes. Hell's Pernicious Deed. Deed's been pretty nice. I don't mind it against Delva on the play. Um, we played it against Ant, which is pretty good. I do like it against a lot of the Yorion decks that are playing Astrolabes and Abundant Growths. Um, there's also kind of an uptick in Chrome Mox decks, which is kind of nice. So I don't mind hitting, hitting those either. Oof. Swords is a pr pretty nice pickup, let's be honest. Uh, do I want to play... I do want to play a creature here, but it's kind of rough playing the Scoos. I think I can be pretty patient with the Ooze and try to play it out around Bolt, but I, I don't think we have that option. This also allows me to play uh, the Knight next turn as a 3-3. If the Scavenging Ooze gets bolted, then you know maybe they don't have a second one for Knight, but pretty rough. Have I considered switching out white for red? Uh, I haven't. Like a Jund version? We have, um, we've been playing a lot of cloths in Punishing Fire, which is pretty sweet. There's Chain. Okay. Swords. Alright. At least the Wasteland allows us to play around Bolt, which is kind of nice. I mean, if they try to Bolt this Knight, I'll be pretty happy. I can still call it Maverick. I think it would be cool to, to get Jun back, but... It's just a, a little bit too... What's the word? A little bit too fair. There are some players online that play it, which is nice, but... Yeah, it just kind of misses out, especially since um, a few pretty big printings. Oof. Okay. 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 I wonder what they do here. Make a food. Okay. I 
wonder if they're going for bolt now. No, two four. Ponder. Okay. So Oko can exchange creatures with power three or less. Okay. And there's no shuffle off the top. Okay. We'll submerge. That's pretty nice. Old school, but I'll take it. Hmm. I don't mind just replaying the night. I probably could have played the windswept heath as well to try to get four lands in or two more lands in the graveyard that aren't just like wasteland myself to make the night a four four. I could have had windswept heath and wasteland. One card in Oko. So I'm definitely drawing a card in my end step. Or in their end step. Untapping. We do have a few good cards. You're gonna make that a food, that's fine. Delve is okay. Alright. What do we get? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what do I want to do? Probably just want to wait for the reveal to see if uh, the delve is going to flip or not and then we get information about what's in their hand no flip wasteland okay that is going to be fine So I could trade Windswept Heath with it. I could go and get a Dried Arbor and block with the Thalia and Dried Arbor. But that turns us off drawing into Decay for Oko because then we won't have two sources of the colors. So I think here we just let this slide. I wonder if they try to Elk their Delver instead of making a food. Then we can sort the Delver in response. No, they're gonna make a food, all right. Pretty happy just to get that out of the way. Noble. Noble's not the worst. Means we can attack for three into Oko. We could just lose to three threes. I wanted to get rid of the Delver because I feel like we have a lot more draws to um, stall the ground than we do to stall the air. And the Delver is going to inevitably flip. Inevitably flip. They're just going for food. Okay. Kai is also a nice out. Hmm. 
Uh, interesting. Name a card that you're excited to play with, but haven't cast yet. That's a tough one. Um, it is probably... I was going to say Yorion and Highlander. That's pretty, pretty close. Uh, it could be... Uh, Claw. It could actually be Uro in Highlander. I think Uro is pretty good in Highlander. So I'm going to say it's uh, it's probably Uro in Highlander. <laughs> what about you, Nick? What's a card that you are you're excited about that you've never cast before? The question is, do I have to save a turn here? I can Wasteland the Wasteland, and then it forces me to fetch, because they probably just Wasteland the Verdant. And I can go and get Dried Arbor, but it's not the greatest. I think I have one more turn. Garuda? Yeah, Garuda's a good choice. All right, we get a good drill step here. Mum, a little bit too late, but I'll play it. This probably means that I just want to attack the Oko with Noble Hierarch. Um, yeah. Just so they lose the Oko if they want to take the Mum. To be fair, I, I assume that is tick up on the food and swing for nine, and then we're in dire straits. Hmm. All right. Sack it your wasteland. And to be fair, I should have attacked with the bird, not the noble, because I want to block with the noble, not the bird. So now if we draw into a black creature, I can't really do anything. Hmm. Maybe that's best case. Maybe I have to keep the bird open. Yep. Rough. Uh, definitely not playing 61. I'm going to go down on a Sylvan Library. I think that might be it. I might just cut... Uh, Veil's actually interesting, especially with the Okos. I'm going to cut a Green Sun, so there's not one bullet that I'm looking for. Hmm. And... Probably just a plague to be fair. I don't think a plague is that great. I'd rather remove the creature that I'm trying to sort of shun out than just give it Negwon Negwon. Uh, this is okay. I'm going to keep this. Savannah into Sylvan Library. Hmm. 
I don't mind Bayou. So if I go Bayou into Noble Hierarch, that's also pretty good. Bayou into Noble Hierarch means we can hold up to K. Savannah means we can Swords if we lose. I think Savannah's fine. And just keep the fetch lands around for the Black Sources. I don't really want to put a Black Source on the table this early as well. Because there's only three in the deck. I guess, yeah, three in the deck. Trop's okay. Trop Ponder? Okay. Would love to see a shuffle. They chose to shuffle. Okay. Well, hopefully for a land. Planes. We're going to Wasteland first to play around days because I don't want them to days back to land if that's their only land. Trop Ponder, okay. Chose to shuffle, okay. Well, now we have a, a wasteland, which is nice. Windswept. Veil. Pretty happy to put away the second sword. I'm going to pay for the veil. Just to look a little bit deeper. Put this on top. Play Wasteland. Hit Trop. Oh, okay. Well, now we really need to find some actual gas because having a reactive hand when our opponent is on no lands is pretty rough. Draw the swords and then two new cards. Green Suns is pretty nice. I'm going to put this on top and this on top. Now, I don't... I definitely want to fetch, but is there a two drop that I really want? Or do I want to keep it for next turn when I can try to do it for three? I feel like I kind of want to keep it for a night. Scooze isn't the worst, but it just kind of dies to bolt, which... I know it was a pretty lame argument, but I'd rather play the, the ooze late game when there's creatures in the yard, so I think I'm actually okay with just attacking and passing and looking at the top again next time. I think my best draw is another reliquary because it's it's most likely... Ah, oh, no, I can still... Sweet, I can still fetch here. Just gonna get a bayou. Yeah, knight's the best draw because it's a three drop that demands a force of will, and we have the veil of summer. Especially if they're gonna be on one land each turn, pretty much. Kai is pretty sweet. Um, I'm gonna go with Kaya this turn. I'm gonna go with Kaya, hold up veil, and then next turn we can green suns hold up veil. Exile these two. Maybe Noble and Kaya can just get us to an ulti that actually uh, delivers. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, exactly. Having Vale and Green Suns is really nice. And we know the Bayou's on top as well, so... 
Preordain's fine. If they bottom bottom, okay, 1-1. One, one. I was going to say there might even be a world where I just go for Ramanap into Wasteland, but I kind of like having a non-boltable Wasteland engine. Scooze, not as good. Put on top, put on top. Land. Exile these two. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be a Scooze game. I think we we're going to close it out before then, so I didn't really mind how I exiled. But it also meant, meant we gained some life, which maybe we can use later on with the Sylvan Library, which would be pretty sweet. I guess if they have Days and Force here, it's a little bit rough. Oh, they have nothing. Okay. There's Knight. We do know they have Submerged, so at least we can hold up Veil here. I don't want to attack with the Noble. But yeah, there's also a world where it's probably just correct to actually keep the Dread Horde in the bin. Because there's no real way they're getting it back. It might even be a situation where going after their lands is also correct because of cloths. But I believe they can also target our stuff, so... See how this unfolds. Is this some sort of, like, dismember? Hmm. Dismember and Bolt? Well, I think we just go for Veil here, to be fair. Surely they have a counter for Veil. Ah, <laughs> they don't! <laughs> nice. Nice. I reckon, yeah, that's uh That's pretty crazy. Surely with with six cards in hand after doing nothing early on, I thought they would have had one. Yeah, this member's rough there as well because it also takes off um takes off the amount of life they have for our for our clock, so it it probably ends up being a whole turn, to be fair, with the knight. But round five guy Ruda. I hope not. Um, if it is, then it's going to be a case of like just... Run. Yeah, I'm not going to be happy with it. Garuda's, uh, Garuda's tough. For the fair decks, I mean, we had a turn one deafening silence and turn two they went off. Like, to be fair, they, they did go off in a way that seems reasonable. But... Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough. And it, it's tough t for them to whiff as well. They have so many good creatures in the deck to hit that... It's not often they cast Garuda and then just kind of miss miss it. Yeah, I have a few one, uh, a few sounds, which is kind of cool. Yeah, the uh, the stream deck I had to do, take out the USB and put it back in, so it kind of reset some of the sounds. This the setting, sorry, with uh with volume. Hopefully we can finish this as a 3-2. That'd be kind of nice. Connor on top, very cool. With uh, I know he's been playing a lot of 4-color loam. Um, Eric has been playing, I believe, Guy Ruda. I don't think he's on Black Red Reanimator. Which is interesting because I think that because of Guy Ruda and how a lot of the graveyard deck, graveyard hate doesn't really hit it, I think right now is kind of a good time for Black Red Reanimator. He's on Guy Ruda? Okay, interesting. Mono black Guy Ruda? Is it, yeah, I saw that. I think uh, XJ Cloud played it. John played it a bit. Punishing Waterfalls. I've definitely heard that name before. Alright. On the play against Ruda. 
Um, this is a hand I'm probably happy to throw back. The mana's a little bit rough with the Blast Zone and Wasteland. We have a turn two Thalia, but then we probably don't have an Abrupt Decay we can cast. Yeah, I think it's a, a, a lot better six, to be fair. And this is pretty close. Kind of rough on lands. <laughs> but we can probably just drop the Dried Arbor here and try to... Hmm. Maybe Dried Arbor isn't the drop. How many trophies have I got? I have got zero trophies this season. Yeah, I believe it says... Ah, uh, when we're looking. Hmm. I think the Dryad I want to keep, just in case I don't draw into a land, I want to play a land. So I think it's going to be the Abrupt Decay that I drop. Do you think Magic should have an Australian theme set? Um, to be fair, we did get a... It's called Homelands. That would be an interesting set. We do have the APAC lands, which is nice. We do have Uluru, which is cool. Uh, we also have Didgeridoo, which is nice. A little uh, Australian theme card. It would be very interesting. <laughs> Australian Knights. I like that. There's Boomerang and Legends. Yeah, there we go. That's three already. Uh, I don't believe there's a kangaroo like creature or card. Island Ponder. Okay, turn to Thalia. It is. Giant Spider. Yes. Very nice, Adrian. Here we go. Julian has started something. Giant spider with flying. <laughs> there is Mother Kangaroo. Alright. Ponder chose not to shuffle. Rabid Wombat? Is is it? Wow, okay. Interesting. I had no idea there was a Wombat in the set. Or in, in Magic as, as, as a total. Whatever is on Polymore is probably a Kangaroo. Let's have a look. Oh, Polymorphous? Yeah, I think it's a rabbit. I th I'm pretty sure that's a rabbit. But... Hmm. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow the judges to predict that one. Underground Sea, interesting. I wonder if this is a uh, ant or some sort of combo deck. They aren't playing Snow Basics, so they're not messing around. There's also a Prison Realm. <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> uh... Oh, there's also a Lonely Sandbar, which I'm sure you could find on one of the coasts of Australia. Full of deadly snakes. Nice. Alright, I think Night of the Reliquary is probably the next play here. Okay, well, Savannah makes it pretty nice. There's also Wildfire, that's very true.
Yeah, ScoMo sounds like an instant, I'm going to say. All right, one second. Looks like they're pretty set to go off. Decay on Thalia. Okay. Another knight. I wonder if I'm supposed to go after the underground sea here. Main deck decay is interesting. I'm going to go for the Bayou. I'm not too sure what this is yet. I'm going to assume it's a combo deck, but... Probably happy with just attacking with Mum here. I'm just going to keep Swords up just in case. Yeah, it looks like Ant with main deck decay. Especially the double pond to start. Okay. <laughs> now we got it. I kind of hope that it's go for tendrils for 20 and then we can swords our own knight. Doomsday. Interesting. So they kind of have to win. I guess they have eight mana. So maybe they can just win on the spot. Because they can't really take a hit. So unfortunately this is going to be game. Could be Doomsday. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately it could be Doomsday. Yeah, maybe it's just a, a different version of Doomsday. Or a little bit of spice. I've definitely seen a uh, Rit before, but Kabal's interesting. Yeah, no astrolabes is interesting. Put a card back on top, put a card back on top. <laughs> Garudi running uh, Cabal Pits would be pretty interesting. I'll give you that. Five cards. Brainstorm. Thank you. 
One card left in hand, four in the deck. Oh wow, they screwed it? Interesting. Huh. Well. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. Deafening silence, yes. Veils I don't mind because of Teferi and also some amount of hand disruption. I think the swords can come out and I can just rely on the decays if I really want to decay anything. Uh, Frask is too slow. Kai is not the worst. Yeah, uh, Moto says they always left the game. So that means they go to the sideboard, yeah. That's correct. Deed's interesting. Surgical doesn't really do anything. Gadok Teague doesn't really do anything. I think it's a case of just Thalia's and Deafening Silences and trying to control a bit of the board with Mother of Runes. I think this is fine. Let's see how this goes. I kind of want to see more of the deck, especially in games 2 and 3. They usually bring in a few more permanents, so... Can base some changes off that. Yeah, a well time surgical can definitely do the trick. Maybe it's a case of just looking over this deck again and seeing what isn't as good. Like Blast Zone probably isn't that relevant. We do have um, Kaya and Scavenging Ooze for any sort of graveyard interactions, but taking a card out of their deck, usually you don't see any of the cards that are in the Doomsday pile before they cast Doomsday, which is pretty tough. You can get a shuffle effect sometimes, but usually it's pretty hard. Maybe that's like, yeah. I'm going to drop a, a Blast Zone. Yeah, sadly it only needs the trigger. <laughs> I'm going to drop a ramen up and play the second surgical. I think it's fine. Even if they win, maybe we can surgical them to see their library. But usually if they do that, they're just going to win anyway. Oh, 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 oh no. <laughs> Classic. Did we get it? I don't think we got it. I think we just submitted our same 60. Come on. Okay, that's fine. Nice. Lucky. Always lucky. Yeah, Travis, that's actually... Yeah, that's very true. Being able to shuffle after a Doomsday is pretty sweet. Even if you can hit the uh, the LED. But yeah, usually they can draw their extra pile. I mean, in that case, just then, they obviously got the, the order incorrect. We didn't. We definitely should have. But yeah, the main deck decays are pretty cool. I wonder if our opponent is actually having connectivity issues. Um, currently no green mana to cast most of our spells it's nice because the green suns for collector oof is also a pretty good play but I think I want to mull this to a, a hand that actually can cast everything in hand hmm The 
The only reason that I really like this hand is that it's a turn one mum, and then we have two draw steps to try to find the green source for turn two collector oof with mum as backup. I wonder if I'm supposed to surgical do uh, lotus petals here. Is their pile a lot harder without lotus petal? I don't believe I can hit Doomsday because I believe this exiles with it. Does Doomsday go to the graveyard? No, yeah. Yeah, I don't mind at least seeing their library. To be fair, they could just go four lands, two fetches and two, and then... Uh... Thassa's Oracle? A infernal tutor. So really just the thought seizers that they brought in. I don't believe it is aligned because I don't think we get a, a chance to exile the Doomsday. Oh, Kai's ulti is pretty sweet <laughs> against them, but probably not quick enough because we need two tick ups. So this does just put them on two islands, two fetches, and Thassa's Oracle. I assume is the line. It's cool to see Doomsday back though. I mean, Thassa's Oracle obviously gave it a kind of rejuvenation, which is a great card to have as an end game with, uh, with Doomsday. But before that, it kind of dropped off a bit. Still a little bit too glass cannony. Oh, you finished it? Very cool. All right. Oh, the Doomsday does go there. Interesting. I assume if it's just lands and faster, then it doesn't really matter. Caracas. Yeah, I can see that. Nice. 
Draw into the oracle. They went on Chrome Moxes. I wonder if I don't mind Kaya. Kai's pretty nice because even if it gets to close to the ulti, they can't really doomsday unless they go off on the same turn. Hmm, Mulligan this. Uh, keep this. This is pretty good. Hey. <laughs> Arkin, welcome to the stream. Hope you're well. Did you play something tonight? Uh, I'm going to keep this. I think because we saw Decay, I'm pretty happy just dropping one of our lands. I guess Veil also kind of makes uh, Abrupt Decay redundant, so maybe the second Thalia is worth just dropping. I guess it also plays around Thoughtseize, which is nice. I think this is fine. It's gonna go for a Savannah into Deafening Silence. I put it on six as well. Nothing interesting. Gonna go for a bayou. Thalia. Okay. Definitely the start we need against Doomsday. Now we can follow up with Noble Hierarch. Drawing a land would be great because then we can hold up Veil of Summer as well. But uh, Noble Hierarch just increases that clock just that little bit. I guess a thought sees here would be pretty rough. It does take the veil. Fatal push. Okay. Interesting. We didn't see that before. I didn't want to rely on just the, the Deafening Silence on board. I wanted to follow up with the uh, the Thalia right away. Because I don't think developing mana is that much of an issue right now. It's really just making sure we can protect the Thalia and the Deafening Silence. Brainstorm's fine. But at least now we have a nice situation of holding up Veil and then also just cast Bird next turn if we need to. I 
I still like Thalia because even if it's impossible for them to go off, it does impede some of their uh, brainstorms and ponders a little bit. I guess the Deafening Silence doesn't kind of changes things because they're probably not casting two spells anyway, but it's pretty nice. Predict. Okay. Thalia is also a clock, and I just want to get a clock on board. Hopefully we're just not slow enough. Oh, fast enough, sorry. I'm sure they can play through it, but at least we also have a clock, which is, yeah, the main thing that I was going for. Because without a clock, I'm just giving them time to set up a win through the Deafening Silence or through the Thalia. I think I'd still do the same line through a newer list anyway. The protection on Veil here is, is nice, but it's really the extra draw step that I want, or, or extra card, just to find another threat. Because currently it's a four turn clock, which is pretty slow. Chain's okay. Green suns would be nice. Wasteland, interesting. Probably want to take them off double black. Just to keep them off Doomsday as much as possible. So it looks like they're looking to chain and probably either my upkeep or end step. Most likely end step, so I can't replay it. Green Suns is pretty nice because that's exactly what I wanted. Probably to go for Collector Oof. Two, four, six. I could also go for Questing Beast, but I kind of want to keep up Veil of Summer.
Yeah, I can cast Green Suns, but it's really a choice between Green Suns and Veil. And maybe it's just a case of Veil, because if they fetch, they go to 5, and then the following turn, Questing Beast is just lethal with the Noble Hierarch out. So I don't mind just holding up Veil here. They do have two chains, but they at least can't both cast them both in this turn. Not sure why they fetched there. Did they know what was on top? Verdant. Ooh. Yeah, to be fair, knowing about the second chains, maybe I just let the Thalia come through and then hit the one that's targeting Deafening Silence. That's probably the correct line. And really, that was just a case of stopping and thinking a little bit more. We have 15 minutes, which is more than enough against Doomsday. So I think, yeah, we, we hold the Veil there. Thalia's fine. Let them untap, cast the chain, and then we do it. I think the Thalia is the second best permanent on the field. So Deafening Silence is kind of what I probably wanted to keep the Veil for. Interesting at least. Looks like my opponent's a little bit stuck. Oh, is Questing be still in the deck? It is. Okay. For a second, I thought I took it out. Luckily, I prevailed. <laughs> So close. Not sure what they're doing. If they're just thinking of their next turn, the clock is ticking. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, if you guys like my content, you can check me out at YouTube slash Dukes on Twitch. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can find me at Twitter slash Dukes on Twitch, um, where I do some giveaways. Thanks to MTG Mate, uh, Nick of which, who is in chat. So a huge thank you to you. Um, and then also on the Green Sun Zenith, which is a, a website dedicated to Legacy Maverick. Uh, I do have some content coming out very shortly, which is cool. Yeah, I feel like they want to cast a spell, but they don't understand how Deafening Silence works. So that could be cool. We'll see how that goes. Um, okay. I think there, honestly, with Athalia, it was, a, it was a little bit of like a gotcha moment where I was just so happy to cast the Veil of Summer. I should have really just taken a moment and assessed what was happening. But hey, we'll see if they can go off this turn. If they can, that's very cool. But if not, we do have the beast coming. I think it's coming. 
Duck rit. Okay. So they do have the mana for Doomsday, but they probably want to deal with the Thalia first. Yeah, I gotta get better with my sounds. <laughs> I gotta, uh, yeah. I do have, a, I, I do have a good si uh, Seinfeld one, which we did, we did use uh, last stream, which was pretty funny. The pain costs. Uh, there was definitely a lot of them, but I don't have a fart sound. Sadly not. Ah, uh, okay. Well, yeah, it looks like they couldn't. And they kind of just gave up, which is interesting. Because I feel like they would have had another turn. They didn't know about the green suns in my hand. Which is interesting. Uh, so this is the deck. Um, I think there's a, a bunch of changes that we could do. I do want to play a little bit with Prelate in the deck. Um, I think Prelate's pretty good because we can cast it turn two, which is nice. Um, it actually has some game against Doomsday, which is relevant. Um, which I find we, we actually play a lot, even though it might be a small percentage of the meta. There seems to always be a Doomsday player on when I'm playing. So I do like to do it. Is that a... <laughs> and the, the Lure and Order one, I was so close to getting. Um, I, I, I could find room maybe for the fourth Deafening Silence in the deck. I think the Teague is sadly just old school right now and, and not really where the deck wants to be. A lot of decks have transformed away from relying on win conditions that Teague actually stops, uh, which is pretty rough because Teague is obviously like a pretty good silver bullet, but obviously in this day and age, it's just not as great collapse um but yeah i just i just can't i can't bring myself to drop teague as just a, a one-off in the deck that's kind of a five of with green suns in it there are still some decks where it just is good but you know maybe the the extra deafening silence is just better because i think what this deck lacks is more turn one plays that are good against combo uh some players have been playing around with chalice and i don't mind chalice i think chalice is pretty good uh, especially against the decks where you want to cast it on the play on zero, it's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, sadly, you know, obviously Planeswalkers have kind, of, have kind of moved around from Jace. You know, Teferi and Oko are the big ones now, uh, which can be played around with with Gadok Teague. Um, even things like Show and Tell can can go off easily around Gadok Teague, stopping just the hard cast. Sneak Attack uh, isn't you know isn't really that relevant these days. I think Collector Oof actually just acts as the better hate bear against a lot of the uh, the decks that Gadot Teague used to used to apply some pressure to, but that's it for another time. Uh, that is me. A huge thank you to you guys for coming in and watching. Uh, if you want to know when I go live, you can follow me on Twitter, which is completely free. Uh, I do have a giveaway coming up for the 1200 threshold, and I think I'm only 30-ish away? 23 away. Uh, which is kind of cool, but uh, yeah, if you guys want to find me on YouTube, you can find me at YouTube slash dudes on Twitch. Uh, all my past streams and recorded leagues are there. I do some leagues without chat uh, and just kind of talk through my lines, which is kind of nice. Uh, I break them up by games, which is cool, so you can watch them ad hoc. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, as I said, of course. Uh, and also, I'll be back on Friday night. Not too sure what I'm playing. Uh, I will be... Uh, doing a donation deck list next Wednesday evening, which is cool. Uh, it'll be a Punishing Maverick deck without the Punishing Fires. It looks pretty sweet. I'm, I can't wait to play it. Um, I'm a big fan of God of Destiny. Uh, Clothus. Clothus? I could say its name wrong. Uh, but sadly... Uh, a donation deck list is where someone uh, pays me $10 uh, to play a deck that they've wanted to have on stream. Uh, and see how it goes, which is pretty sweet. Uh, there should be more information about don donation deck lists below in my uh, area below. It's gone. Uh, I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> I have been doing it for a while. Yeah, Colossus seems really good right now, especially in the Delver decks that are splashing it. I really like that. 
Um, would be cool to play some Delva or some Sneak and Show, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm going to send you guys over to Tagores, who I believe is playing Legacy. Legacy Land Jund. Okay, nice. That's pretty sweet. Uh, but enjoy your week ahead. I will see you on Friday evening, hopefully. Um, stay safe, stay well. I know it's a pretty traumatic time, so we'll see what happens. Garuda would be sweet. Um, Nick, because it's you, if you did have a donation deck list, you could also come on the stream and we could actually work through a league together through Discord, which would be very cool. Uh, so let's raid Tagores. Tagores, of course, a GP champion with Legacy Storm, which is very cool. That is it. Uh, we will see you around. Uh, all the best. Thanks again for watching. Uh, my name is Dukes on Twitch. Uh, see you next time.